Uh, hello everyone, uh, my name is Furkan and today I will talk about the paper Objects That Sound. So the motivation of this paper is uh, showing the audio and visual embeddings can be mapped into a common space. And also uh, these mapping can be learned using only uh, audio-visual correspondence. And uh, these mappings, uh, these embeddings are suitable for uh, single modality uh, <coughs> retrieval and cross modal retrieval. Then, uh, semantic object that sounds can be localized with the same task but a different network design. And uh, it, and also, uh, we will explore various network architecture for uh, AVC task. So, they use a publicly available audio. Uh, audio set data set and this data set consists of 10 seconds of uh, YouTube video clips. Uh, they filter to include only musical instruments and at the end they achieved 110 uh, audio classes, for example accordion, flute or piano. And uh, totally they have 300k videos uh, with a test split of 260k uh, with a split of 260k train, 30k validation, and 4k test. And labels only used for quantitative evaluation, so this is a uh, completely self supervised uh, learning uh, because uh, the audio and, <coughs> audio and visual frames are already synchronized in the video. So uh, let me talk about video. Uh, audio-visual embedding network structure, but before the structure, uh, let me talk about the, how they give the inputs. So they uh, reshape the frames to 224 by 224, and uh, then they also get uh, one second audio signal from around that frame, and then uh, take a log spectro spectrogram of that audio and get a 257 by 200 grayscale image. So they give audio signal also as an image and use 2D convolutions. And they apply a convolution layer, uh, uh, totally eight convolution layers to uh, image frame, single frame. And they start with a, uh, they start with a convolution layer with uh, stride, stride two. Just like to make this. So they start with a uh, convolution layer and use stride 2. So this uh, maps the uh, frame size to 112 to 112 and uh, 64 channel layers. And uh, continue with another convolution layer, apply a max pooling, which decreases the size 50 by 56 by 56. And each every block, they increase the channel number by 2. So uh, they get 128 channels, 256 channels, and, and 512 channels. And uh, with pooling layers, they get 14 by 14 frame size. Then they uh, apply the same uh, structure to the audiovisual uh, audio structure, audio. So they also apply a stride to and, uh, and you can see the uh, <coughs> channel layers are correspond to each other. So they try to make the networks as similar as possible. Then they continue to uh, with a uh, pooling layer, which is actually decreases the 14 by 14 frame size to one by one. And at the end they have 512 uh, channels and with two fully connected layers, they decrease this 128 vector size, and they apply a L2 normalization. And after this, they get a Euclidean distance. So this is actually there where they get kind of loss. Then they apply a fully connected, tiny, really fully connected layer, which is one by two, on the consists of two neurons. And at the end, they apply a softmax, which gives this to audio and uh, frame is corresponds or not. So, 
why they apply a, uh, a tiny fully connected layer? Because generally uh, what we see is uh, when they get Euclidean distance, uh, most networks try this as a loss. Instead of they are using this as a loss, uh, they didn't want to use a hyperparameter. So uh, because hyperparameter can, you have to search for it and decide which hyperparameter is the best. Instead of that, they apply the fully connected layer. So this fully connected layer helps like this. So you get the Euclidean distance, and uh, this neuron, if this neuron is activated, it is yes, and if this neuron is activated, this is no. But uh, they want the Euclidean distance, if it is two things is closed, they want it, uh, to, uh, this neuron to be activated. So to achieve that, they decided to, uh, the weights and biases sign initially, and the network converged it. So let's assume that we have a uh, weight W1 minus 1 and uh, bias 5, W2 1 and uh, bias 2 is minus 5. So then if you get a Euclidean distance 10, we achieve minus 5 at yes and no at 5, then we, when we apply a softmax, it converges to 0 and 1. Then, uh, if we get a Euclidean distance 1, we get 4 and minus 4 for the no, and this converges to its softmax 1 and 0. So they achieved, they, they only decided the signs initially, then the network trained itself with the same. Uh, then they made a qualitative analysis and they compared with other methods. So when they get a select random uh, image to image or image to audio model retrieval, uh, the random gives uh, 0.0407. And they have a previous work which is called L3Net. So when they apply L3Net to this retrieval, they get an image to image and audio to audio good results. But this network is not uh, think, uh, they didn't think about this network to get embeddings for cross-modal retrieval. So they get a bad result in audio image or image to audio. Then they uh, apply a <coughs> canonical uh, correlation analysis. With that, they increase the image to audio and audio image rates. Then they decide to uh, compare with VGG16 image net feature maps. So they get uh, 4,000 dimensional vector size and decreases, decrease that to 128. And they get image to image retrieval of uh, 0.6, which is VGG16 is a really good network. Then they apply, they also add their L3D audio uh, embeddings. And with that, they also uh, able to get image to audio or audio image. But when it's compared to their uh, audio-visual embedding network, uh, they get a really good results, even when it's compared with their previous network, L3Net. So uh, training your network while thinking about uh, getting a cross-model embedding helps a lot. Then uh, in here, uh, they give, for quality results, they give their network an image and get embeddings, and they find the five top five uh, similar images. You can see all those corresponds to guitars. Then they give an audio, but instead of showing audio signal, because we can't determine, they show the frame from where audio is achieved. So they get an audio to audio retrieval, and we can see all those audios actually consist of kind of guitar sounds. Then they made a uh, cross-model retrieval, so they give the net, they get embeddings from audio and ask for images, and they get similar kind of uh, <coughs> instruments. And with imaged audio, they also get similar kind of audios. And you can see these audios actually are guitar sounds, but uh, they so this shows their network, their data that actually is noisy. And uh, they also 
tried to localize which uh, instruments make that sound. So they uh, update their network. So uh, for feature normalization, uh, they removed the L2, L2 regularization. As you can see, they removed this L2 normalization layer. Then uh, <coughs> audio subnet, uh, then they decided to, yeah, they keep this audio subnetwork, so they didn't change anything in this network. Then they changed in uh, <coughs> visual subnetwork, they removed this pooling layer 14 by 14 to keep the 14 by 14 frame size. And then they, uh, they to keep this resolution uh, until the end of their network, they changed the fully connected layers to uh, <coughs> one by one convolution layers. So at the end, they achieve a 14 by 14 by 28 feature vector from frames, and, they, and in here, they have 128 embeddings of audio. Then they apply a scalar multiplication, and uh, they, instead of Euclidean distance, they get a 14 by 14 by one heat map, and then apply a, for similar, to keep similarity, they apply a uh, one by one convolution layer again, and it's sigmoid, they get a heat map where the uh, <coughs> object is localized. Then it's the same thing, they apply a max pool, it, the max pool, the network says is this sound and video corresponds or not. So the network actually trained with the same task and still they didn't use any ground truth or localization ground truth. And when they uh, give their network these frames and the uh, corresponding audio signals, they determine the where the objects that sounds. So here are more results. So you can see their network can detect different kind of instruments or even uh, a singer who sings a song. Also they give their failure cases. So you can see this is from the uh, noise of data because they have a lot of videos that has uh, a single frame as a node and uh, audio, so their network actually think that these uh, produce the sound. And also, uh, most of the videos have some kind of text on it, so it, it, it also detects text as a sounding object. Also, sometimes their network detects the salient parts. For example, in here, there is a actual symphony sound, but it thinks that a human producing that sound. And uh, in some cases, it also failed to detect, fails to detect the object. Then they also asked their network what would make this sound. So they gave this flute sound, and they gave this frame, and they achieved the localization of flute in this frame. But when they gave the uh, piano sound and this frame, Actually, the piano is highlighted. And when they give a uh, battery sound, no one is, no region is activated in this frame. And here are more results of that. Also, they uh, gave a, <coughs> a whole video to their network. And you can see in the video when it starts with guitar sound, it detects guitar, but then the child starts to speaking, and when it starts to speaking, actually the uh, ch child's mouth is activated. So here is a example video. Okay, it's not playing. Okay, you can look at this video on YouTube, and they gave the link on Do you, uh, because you don't have a link, what is uh, I changed computers because of that. Oh.
When the audio matches, it activates actually correct regions. But when they give a <laughs> there is a mismatched audio, then it is nowhere is activated. So actually the network is quite selective. Also, they uh, try to give more information to their network, like optical flow or multi multiple frames. So in multiple frames, they give 25 frames and use convolution 3D. So instead of convolution 2D, they, use, they only change the network to convolution 3D. And in optical flow, they actually updated their network a little bit. So audio vision, audio convolution net part stays the same. Then they give a single frame and a uh, 10 by 2, 10 channel of uh, <coughs> optical flow frames. So it corresponds totally to 20 frames. And they apply uh, different flows. And at the end, they concatenate. And the rest of the network stays the same. But at the end, they, achieve, they use the same network. But the results are not really good. Even the performance of audiovisual correspondence increased, so by almost 3%. But they didn't uh, achieve any effect on retrieval, cross model retrieval performance. So you can see the, uh, and they give only the results of optical flow net. And you can see these <coughs> values are almost the same. So actually, then they decided to continue their networks with a single frame. As a conclusion, uh, they show that audiovisual correspondence task enables learning embedding for cross-modal retrieval. And uh, they can semantically uh, localize objects that sound. And uh, same task with an appropriate network design enables actually new functionalities to be learned.